Hey, what's going on guys? It's Pete here with MixBetterNow.com and today I want to talk about mixing bass using the 80-20 rule. Let's check it out. Alright, so we're continuing mixing The Limit here by Matt McKelkin. We have a session open here in Studio One version 3. Um, in the last couple of installments in the series, we talked about using the 80-20 rule with mixing. Now, for those of you just tuning in, what the 80-20 rule states is that in the majority of life's events, 80% of the outcome comes from 20% of the effort or from 20% of the input. Now, when we apply that concept to mixing, what that means is that 80% of our end mix result comes from 20% of the mix moves that we do while mixing. So the way that we uh, use this to our advantage is by doing broad stroke moves uh, while mixing. Okay, In the first uh, uh, series of videos, I talked about uh, the mix bus and how important it is to set up your mix bus with things like EQ and compression, harmonic saturation, uh, and, you know, an overall sweetening. Then we talked about mixing drums and how you know um, uh, treating groups of tracks together on a bus first and then working backwards. Uh, you know, so for example, we send all of our drum tracks to a drum bus and then we can work backwards and you know kind of tweak a drum here and there if it needs it as opposed to going ahead and pulling up each individual fader um, it doesn't have as much impact in the end as it would uh, by doing these broad stroke moves so we're going to uh, continue applying that concept here to the bass I'm going to play some of this for you so you can hear what we got going on let's check it out you can take my heart to the limit it'll keep me going back All right, so I played a little bit of the chorus there for you, soloed up the bass so that you can hear it. Um, now, the bass tracks uh, are in blue here, so uh, I have a bass DI and a bass amp track that are both going into uh, my bass bus. Now, I want to talk about the way that I typically mix bass in my, um, in my uh, sessions. But what I did was I set up another, I basically duplicated everything. So we have an empty uh, second bass DI track, a second bass uh, amp track, and then another bass bus. Because instead of just going through and explaining, yeah, you know, I put this plug-in on here and I did this and I did this, I want to show you kind of, uh, I want to do it in front of you basically is what I'm saying. So let's go ahead and click over to the arrange window here. Now, my concept uh, with bass is is I like to have control over the tone of it. Uh, uh, for for uh, a multitude of different reasons. So 99% of the time when you get a set of multi-tracks from your client or you know if you're recording bass in your own session, there's always going to be a bass DI track. Um, it's just a standard uh, uh, part of tracking bass these days. Now sometimes a producer uh, or an artist will have a very specific vision uh, you know, tonally as to what they might want the bass to sound like. So then, you know, they'll roll out the uh, uh, the bass rig, mic it up, get their tone that way, and then sometimes you will get a bass amp track with a bass DI track. Um, in this case, I only got one bass track, which was the DI. So what I like to do is I take the DI, I drag it in, and then I will duplicate that track to what I call a bass amp track. Uh, so it's basically the same... Uh, audio going to a bass bus, but I will process the bass amp track in a in a different way to get an amp like sound to distort it a bit, to saturate it a bit, and blend the two together. Uh, it really allows the bass to poke out uh, in the mix, to punch through, and to find its own space. So, like I said, what we're gonna do here, I'm gonna drag this down. Uh, we'll put this on this track here, and we'll duplicate it. So. Now we have our raw bass tracks. I'll play it for you, solo it up. We'll unsolo these. Let's go back to the mix window. Okay, so this is just the raw bass. I've bypassed everything here. Um, this is what it sounds like. Okay. Just to show it's the same thing, here it is on the bass amp track. Both of them in. Oh, 
okay? And then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna use the bass bus here as my overall volume control, which then goes out to my mix bus. Now, instead of going in and individually uh, tweaking, uh, you know, the DI and the amp track, what I want to do is I want to first process the bass bus. Uh, you know, depending on the way that the bass sounds, you know, sometimes I'll EQ and compress. I'll just about uh, always compress a bass track. Sometimes if it needs EQing, it will definitely get EQ'd. But I want to show you what I did here. So instead of, of coming onto the, uh, um, uh, the tracks, you know, and pulling up one fader, then another fader. I just went ahead and I pulled on a tape machine. So it's the first thing I like to do when I mix bass is I like to send the bass to uh, hit some type of tape saturation. Um, so I have the uh, the UAD Studer here. I've turned the noise off, and let's go ahead and get our signal. I'm going to send both of these in at Unity. So I'm going to keep this at zero. I'm going to keep this at zero, and like I said, I'm going to use the bass bus as my volume. So we want to watch the VU meter here. If I need to drive it, I will, but I want to see the VU meter going up a bit because then I know that we are actually sending volume into the plugin. Okay, that looks good. I'm going to leave it alone for now because we are going to go ahead and we're going to put a bass amp sim uh, on the uh, on the amp track. Now we're going to get more volume from that. So uh, like I said, I'm going to leave that alone for now. Okay, then what I did is I went in here, I grabbed an EQ. Um, now, the reason I like using the Fab Filter EQ, uh, aside from the fact that it's just, it, it can do anything you want it to, is it has, um, uh, you know, a, a spectrogram in here where you can actually see uh, the uh, EQ. Now this is really helpful because when we're looking at it, uh, we learn a couple things about bass this way. If we pull this down for a minute so I can let it play while I talk to you, um, you notice there's not much going on really above 10K, all right? I mean, we can actually hear it if we solo this and then roll it back, but we can uh, use a high cut and roll off a bunch of the top as we can uh, do a bunch of the bottom. Uh, I like using a high pass filter on bass and on kick drums because I feel like it tightens them up. If you just have it, um, I mean, you can uh, decide to not use a high pass filter, but I feel like a lot of the sub lows will get through there. And on a lot of the playback systems that people are listening uh, on nowadays, you're really not going to be able to hear, you know, anything below 30 hertz, 35 hertz. So what I've gone ahead and did is I've set the uh, high pass to 35 hertz here. We bring the volume back up. So if I solo this, you can just hear that there's just some, some sub lows down there that we're really kind of missing. So we're getting rid of those. Here's the, uh, the high cut or the low pass. So all you can, you can hear like some of the string noise you know, kind of the strings hitting the pickup as the bass player is playing and digging in there. There's really not much above 8K. Yeah, I'm like not hearing anything. So the other thing that I've done here is I've gone and I've pulled out a little bit of uh, 290, somewhere around 300, just to get rid of a little bit of that, that kind of boxy uh, uh, frequency. And, uh, you know, that's really all that we need right now. Uh, now, the, the next thing I like to do is compress. So we're going to compress both of these signals. Um, I like to use an 1176 followed by an LA-2A. Uh, in this situation, it just works well. I also do this on vocals quite a bit. Uh, so we're going to go ahead and dial in our 1176. The idea with this compressor is I just want to catch the, um, the peaks of the bass, and I want to knock them back. So I kind of have a slower attack, fastest release possible. Just making sure that our, our uh, level matching was okay. Now, again, we're going to be pushing more volume into this, so I'm just kind of approaching it cautiously. You'll see what I mean when we put the bass amp sim on the uh, the bass amp track. 
So now we're going to go into an LA-2A, and this the whole idea of the optical compressor following the, the FET style compressor is to just kind of smooth all the transients. Um, it's, it's, it's essentially doing the same amount of compression as you would normally do, but when you split it up into two different compressors, you can have them each uh, uh, work less hard, so it's a bit more transparent, and you're not going to hear a whole lot of the audible uh, pumping uh, from the compressors. Okay, very cool. Now, uh, lastly up right now, I have a plugin in. Um, this is a, a newer plugin from Softube. It's, it's, it's absolutely a, a killer, killer tool. Uh, it's called, it's uh, from Drummer. It's the S73. And what this does is you can blend in different styles of compression. Um, we have uh, in a mount knob here, there's an air knob or an air switch, I should say, which gives us um, a bit of added brightness when it's engaged. Uh, there's a wet dry knob down here as well, and then we have a gain knob. So we can do anything like add some clarity to it. We can add gentle compression, uh, punch, we can widen it, we can add some ambience, etc. So I have it set to clarity. Now, the reason that I have it set to clarity is because um, when I have it in, I can hear that it's kind of affecting the top end of the bass, which is around 2K, which is where a lot of that finger noise is going to be and a lot of that attack of the bass is going to be. So it brings out some of that. Let me show you what it sounds like. Okay, bypass. On. Okay, so that's going to serve us later um, because the bass amp is going to add a lot of low end. So this is going to allow the the, um, the mid range and the upper uh, harmonics of the bass to poke through. So now our bus, uh, our bus bass, our bass bus is ready to go. Um, so what I'm going to do now is I'm going to leave the bass DI completely bare bones, right? So if I bypass all of our inserts here and I solo the DI, this is just the DI sound. It's a good DI sound, so I don't feel like I need to do anything to it. Okay, and now what I'm going to do is on the bass amp track, I'm going to bring in uh, a bass amp sim or two that I like to use, and we're going to see what sounds good. So I'm a big fan of the UAD Ampeg. Um, they have uh, this guy, which is the new B15. I'll explain what that is in a minute. And then we're also going to grab the SVT VR. And these are just different different bass amps tonally. Um, so the the B15 is an old staple. It's a 15 watt head. Um, it primarily got popular in the 50s by a lot of like the Motown players, a lot of the Stax guys, you know, James Jamerson, uh, Duck Don, they were all playing this. It's a 15 watt amp and a lot of the times it came with a, uh, a 1 by 15 uh, speaker, so it's a very specifically voiced amplifier. Uh, it doesn't have as much gain on tap as something like the SVT VR on the right, which uh, was made popular in the late 60s and the 70s, which is a 300 watt head. So, um, but what's cool about both of these is it gives us options here. If we click on the effects rack, I can actually have a drop down and we can pick our speaker cabinet as well as our. Um, uh, what microphones we're, we're miking that cab with, and then it also has different uh, EQ curves associated with each. Um, we have a power soak on here so we can level match. We have a built-in gate, and we have built-in filtering. So um, let's just see what sounds good, uh, and then we can, uh, we can dial it in. I'm going to start with the B15. So let's go ahead and bypass the SVT VR, and let's check it out. Okay, so we're on the left here with the uh, B15. Now we're in the first channel here, which is the 1964. 
channel, I guess. Um, there's a 64 and a 66 circuit. Uh, so the 64 is the volume and the treble and bass on the left, and then the 66 is the one on the right. So I'm going to drive this a little bit because I want to get some breakup on this. I want to get some saturation because that's what's going to differentiate the bass amp track from the bass DI track. And we're going to push this into the bass bus. See what I mean how we're getting that low end and we're getting a lot of that bite and a lot of that saturation that we don't get from this. But when we blend the two, we get a really, really nice sound. So let's keep tweaking this. I'm going to uh, siphon through a few of these settings here. Uh, I might go with something uh, along the lines of like a 115 just because I like the way that they sound recorded. Um, obviously we have a, an 810 cab as an option and a 410 cab as well. If any of you guys have actually played through those cabinets, you will know that they all sound drastically different, um, especially something like an 810 and a uh, 1x15. So, um, I, you know, I, I can't even say if these all accurately emulate that, but we're just going to find what sounds good for the context of this track. Um, let's try this. To get something with a little bit more bite. Okay, that sounds pretty cool. Let's go ahead and check out the uh, the SVT VR. This might be a little bit more appropriate based on the genre, but I'll tell you what, you would be surprised how many uh, great, great classic records uh, have been tracked. Uh, the bass has been tracked with a B15. Okay, so what I'm gonna do here is I'm gonna push the volume up a bit again, and then I'm gonna use the power soak to back, uh, back off the volume and level match. What's great about this is it actually responds like an amp where the more that you drive a tube head, it is going to break up and it's going to saturate. One fifteen sound kind of cool. All right, let's go ahead and stick with this one. We're going into a one fifteen, which is being mic'd by a to. Uh, Dynamic 7. I'm guessing that's an SM7. Um, what I want to do now is I want to blend these two together, send them into the bass bus, and then we'll slowly bring back in um, the uh, the plugins that we have on there. Uh, we will uh, do our, our, our level matching, and then we should have our tone ready to go. So I leave the bass DI at Unity, and then I just slide the bass amp up to kind of blend it in. So as you can see on the metering there, they're both, you know, roughly about the same level. We get a little bit of that clarity, a little bit of the bite from the DI, and then we're getting a lot of the low end and the saturation from the bass amp. Now, but before I bring these in, let's go ahead and listen in context. Uh, let me mute these. 
Now, I can hear the low end, I can hear the bass, but to me it just still kind of sounds a little bit sloppy and a little bit kind of flubby. So this is where uh, we're going to kind of rein that in. So like I said, we're going to go to the tape first. Let's make sure our, our volume is good. You can take my heart to the limit. So we're okay on the VU meter here. I'm fine with that. Let's go check out our EQ, pull this in. Now this is gonna help a lot doing the filtering. We're gonna get out that subby bottom and then we're gonna take out some of that top end that we don't need. That way we can ensure maximum headroom down the line. I'm actually gonna uh, push the high pass filter up a little bit more because I feel like we can remove even a little bit more low end because what this is gonna do is it's gonna tighten up the sound. So I'm about at 44 hertz there, um, and it might seem like a lot, but it really doesn't matter, you know, visually, it's all about how it sounds. Uh, let's go ahead and kick on the 1176. Okay, just to reiterate, I have a kind of a slower attack for the 1176, uh, the fastest release possible, and then I have a 4 to 1 ratio. Uh, let's go ahead and turn the LA-2A on. Go to the bridge for a second, we got a different uh, bass pattern here. The reason that I'm checking it in the bridge now, we have a different bass line and we might have some uh, some harder playing going on, some more dynamic playing, and I want to just make sure that we're not going to get any extreme amounts of compression uh, further down the line. I don't really want it to go past about 2 to 3 dB because we're doing serial compression here. Okay, that sounds good, looks good. Now what we're gonna do is we're gonna pop the uh, the drummer on here, drummer, <laughs> drummer, drummer. Um, and uh, this is gonna give us our bite and some of our attack back on the top end. Here's some of that snarl come back in right there, right? All right, so now what I want to do is we're going to go ahead, listen in context, and I'm going to use the bass bus fader to get our overall level. Uh, let me drop this down. I'll take it from a verse. I heard out of the cannon. You're hiding behind a smile. I haven't got a chance to answer before my words turn. our bass tone. Cool. 
cool. Uh, everything's sounding great to me so far. I just want to show you one more thing. Now, if you can't get your bass to kind of poke out in front uh, as much as you'd like, if you feel like it's not sitting well, one trick that I like to do or technique that I like to employ is I like to add a little bit of chorusing to the bass. I know that might sound a little strange, but let me show you what I mean. I'm going to pull open two different um, pieces here. We're going to check out the uh, the Eventide, uh, the H910. It, it, it's a harmonizer, but basically what that does is it it, it uh, adds some chorusing. And then I'm going to grab the Micro Shift uh, from Sound Toys, which is basically like an Eventide H3000. And we're going to try and send a little bit of signal into these and see what they sound like. So let me solo the bass DI now. Uh, this is the, the H910, so this is going into this top unit here. Um, and listen what it sounds like. That's obviously exaggerated. But if we dial it in, Now if we bring in the uh, amp track, and in context of the mix, Take my heart to the limit. It'll keep me coming back for more. But then you tell me your heart isn't in it. A different story than you saw. So to me, that sounds great. Uh, you know, we're really employing the 80-20 rule here by doing the majority of our processing on the bass bus. That way we save ourselves a lot of moves, uh, you know, by by processing on the DI and on the bass amp track. I went ahead and just, just we're blending those two. We're sending them into the bass bus. Uh, you know, and we're saving time and we're doing very uh, effective moves, broad stroke moves here to our bass, which is really ultimately making our mix sound great. So uh, we're going to keep cruising along here in this series. Next up, we're going to check out some guitars. Um, so uh, I will catch you guys next time. As always, I appreciate you guys watching very much. My name is Pete from MixBetterNow.com. I will catch you next time and I hope you have a great day. <laughs>